Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brock Cherry for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scarecrow before here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Danelle uh, Ruivok. The Danelle Ruivok previously designated AH-2 and CSH-2 uh, is an attack helicopter manufactured by ben Danelle Aviation of South Africa. Ruivok is Afrikaans for uh, Red Falcon. Development of the type began in 1984 by the Atlas Aircraft Corporation. Its development is closely connected to the Atlas Oryx hel uh, transport helicopter, both aircraft being based on the Aerospatial uh, SA-330 Puma and having started development at the same time. The Ruivok is uh, a helicopter that was really advanced into service uh, due to the uh, impact of, uh, you know, needing a new highly advanced attack helicopter. The South African Air Force ordered 12 Ruivoks, designated uh, the Ruivok Mark 1 in uh, South African uh, Air Force service. The first of which was officially handed over in April of 2011. The helicopters are flown by 16 squadrons based out of Air Force Base uh, Blomingsbrut during, or uh, sorry, near Bomefrontin. Uh, so overall, a really uh, awesome looking helicopter. Uh, this You wouldn't really be expecting South Africa to have some really awesome looking military vehicles, but after building some ground vehicles and um, you know, kind of taking a look into some of their uh, Air Force and stuff like that, they really do have some awesome, you know, vehicles going on so I'm really happy to bring an attack helicopter that's not, not a lot of you guys will probably know about but uh, we'll definitely probably uh, find really cool looking and really interesting now uh, this is a patreon request to build so I want to get, give, go ahead and give a special thanks to patreon supporter Brock Cherry for making this tutorial possible and if you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you guys already do feel free to check my patreon page link is down in the description there's some uh, cool benefits for uh, donating and supporting the channel uh, which uh, is all optional, obviously, but there are some cool perks for uh, donating, so feel free to check it out if you guys are interested. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the helicopter itself, see exactly what we're going to be building, and um, then we'll obviously move into the tutorial. So uh, basically, one of the main things to start off with is obviously we have a camouflage on this aircraft. Uh, most pictures with the aircraft had this sort of green, brown, and kind of like a... Uh, it was kind of more of like a kind of khaki i guess color uh but we're gonna go ahead and just, you know call it a light tan uh so yeah you know basically we got the camouflage on it we'll be doing that at the end of the tutorial so we'll probably do the helicopter on a just a nice uh tan cam or color scheme and then you guys can obviously have the camo on when we go over that a little bit later um so start off with uh we have the gun up in the front here uh probably most likely a 20 or 30 millimeter gun i do not recall exactly offhand what size it is but it's not a very large gun so I, it probably is more of a 20 millimeter uh going ahead and work our way back we got two uh seats here for pilots so obviously we probably have a pilot and then maybe a gunner um is what probably would be the configuration how the apache is all the optics and stuff like that on the front nose of the helicopter obviously uh working our way back we have the wings that extend out to both sides here that have a pretty crazy payload they got lots of different um uh, missiles, bombs, and all kinds of stuff uh, strapped onto the wings and can uh, look like they can carry quite a few bombs. So pretty cool stuff there. Uh, then we have a the jet engines or the turbine engines, whatever you want to call them on the sides here. Uh, overall, pretty cool. And uh, same thing on both sides there. Working our way back, lots of detail going toward the t to the uh, tail here. Um, lots of little different instruments, stuff like that, um, kind of coming down from it. On the back here, we have the rear, uh, you know, rotor on the back here. Um, a very interesting tail shape. You know, usually we just have the, you know, tail go up like that. But this one actually has a little part that kind of goes down. And then we have the rear landing wheel that kind of pops off of that. That's a fixed uh, landing wheel. And also the landing gear itself uh, for the front is also fixed as well. Um, so that's also pretty cool. Uh, then we have the main uh, rotor itself. Uh, pretty standard, straightforward design I've used on my helicopters and stuff like that before and you can see it's tilted forward at a slight angle like so um, anyways that's going to pretty much do it for the overview of the really uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into the tutorial by obviously beginning with our uh, first set of layers here and uh, all that fun stuff again uh, with the tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the aircraft all in a you know tan co color 
and then we're gonna go in back and add the camouflage so if you're wondering why we're skipping over you know mixing the blocks in and adding that camouflage uh that's the reason why anyways let's go ahead and move into the, tu the tutorial by beginning with our first layer Alrighty, guys so going ahead and moving on to our first layer we're beginning with layer number three now the reason why we're beginning with layer three is because this gives you a better general idea of how large the helicopter is and to kind of give you an idea on the structuring and how this helicopter can be placed down in your world now uh, layer three is obviously we're gonna need two blocks of space underneath this layer to be able to occupy the rest of the helicopter so do make sure that you have enough clearance this thing is supposed to be in the air this is the airborne version so most likely if you're building this thing you are going to have this thing flying in the air so you don't really need to worry about that too much just note that you will need two more blocks of space uh for clearance underneath here if this is for some reason close to any kind of obstacles or anything like that um anyways uh once that's all cleared and we're ready to go. We can go and start building this thing. Now, also, if you're new to my tutorials, uh, the way I like to structure this, I like to do half on camera, half off, which means I already have this side built of the helicopter. I'm going to copy the air side over and uh, kind of explain it as we go down. And then it's up to you guys to copy uh, that side that we do on camera over to the air side in between the layers because it's completely symmetrical on both sides. So whatever we do on one side, we're going to do on the other. Uh, just saves time in the tutorial and I don't have to sit here. Uh, recording, you know, twice as long uh, doing the air side when it's the same thing. Anyways, uh, to go ahead and get started here, we're going to take our smooth sandstone blocks and we're going to place down a row of six. This is going to be here for the middle line and this is going to be near the front nose of the helicopter. So if you do want, uh, just for, you know, if you want this in a certain area, just note that this is going to be the front nose of the helicopter here, the very most forward block, except for the uh, little gun that pops out on the bottom there. But this is the forward block right there. Um, once uh, that's done on the front, of this row of six so whatever direction you want the helicopter facing we're gonna have it facing this direction so we're gonna go ahead and go to this side of this row of smooth sandstone blocks place down an item frame with a black stained glass paint inside of it for uh some optics or something of that kind of sort once that's done after this row of six of smooth sandstone blocks we're gonna place down uh, two black wool blocks we then want to place down a row of one two three four five six and seven smooth sandstone blocks followed by one two and three sandstone top slabs a narrow brick upside down stair facing this direction. We're going to skip a space, place down another narrow brick upside down stair. After that's done there, we're going to place down a sandstone stair like this with a space in between this narrow brick stair here and the back of the sandstone stair. Come off the front of the sandstone stair, we're going to place down two sandstone top slabs followed by two wooden trap doors. After that's done, we're going to skip a space of two again, place down a sandstone upside down stair, smooth sandstone block, sandstone stair. Um, and then a stone brick up down stair like so. So it should look this like this on the back here. And you should get something that kind of looks like this going on the side here. Again, this is a space of two in between these wooden trap doors. Space of one in between each of these stairs right here in this section. Um, and that's going to kind of do it there for your center line of the aircraft. Also, on the back of this stone brick stair, we're going to place down a lever. Like, that's facing downwards like so. We're going to place down a sign on both sides of the stone brick up down stair. Followed by a stone button on both sides of this smooth sandstone block. Uh, anyways, once that's complete there, we're going to go ahead and work our way back up to the front. So obviously that's going to be the tail end of the helicopter there. And it gives you a general idea of how big this helicopter is going to be, having this center line built up for the helicopter. Also, make sure that you are uh, making sure that everything lines up and everything is fitting correctly because our rest of our layers will be built on this layer. So if one thing's off, it could throw off your entire build. Um, anyways, going back up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, wither skeleton skull on both sides of this first smooth sandstone block. We're then going to place down a cobblestone wall back, followed by one, two, three, and four smooth sandstone blocks back. We're going to place down two black wool blocks, followed by another row of smooth sandstone. We're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, and seven smooth sandstone blocks back. We then want to take our sandstone slabs, place down one and two sandstone top slabs, followed by two wooden trap doors that go back, and they should end in line with this narrow brick upstairs stair here. Uh, once that's all done, we're going to go ahead and go back up to the front of the helicopter up here. We're going to go ahead and go to the second and third uh, smooth sandstone blocks, place down one and two cobblestone walls coming off of them. After that, we're going to take our smooth sandstone blocks. We're going to place down a row of smooth sandstone that goes back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven smooth sandstone blocks back, followed by one, two, and three cobblestone walls after that. Uh, once that's done for this side here, we're going to go, ahead and go out to the side of these blocks and go ahead and work on a little bit of the detailing here on the sides. So for this, we're going to go ahead and go to the first two smooth sandstone blocks, which I have, the, my bad, the first three. And we're going to go ahead and place down a row of sides on the side of those blocks. Uh, we then want to place down a birchwood defense post like this, 
followed by a row of two of signs on their, the, these two smooth sandstone blocks. And then this last remaining one here, we're going to go and leave untouched. Now, if you do want to go ahead and throw on the armaments onto the wings, which I mean, who doesn't makes the helicopter look a lot more cooler. We're going to go ahead and put those on now. So for this, we're going to go ahead and go to the smooth sandstone block. We're going to go ahead and skip a uh, space and then place down a green stained clay block. So we have a space of one in between the smooth sandstone block and this green stained clay block. Once that's done, come off the green stained clay block toward the front. We're going to place down a wooden trap door. Going back from this green stained clay block, we're going to place down one, two, and three green stained clay blocks. Around uh, this green stained clay block here that has the wooden trap door attached to it, we're going to place down levers on the sides and bottom of the block. We then want to take some signs and we're going to place down signs on the next three uh, green stained clay blocks. The sides here going backwards. So just like that. After that is all complete there, we're going to go and grab ourselves some black wool, place down a black wool block on the end here, followed by a wooden trap door, and we're going to go and place down a stone button on the inside side here of this black wool block and also on the bottom of it like that. Once uh, that's done there, we're going to go ahead and start to get into our kind of bomb section here. So for this section, uh, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down another brick slab, or sorry, dark oak wood slab that's actually going to go ahead and come off this green stain clay block here. So we can delete this sign place down a dark oak wood slab. Now come off the dark oak wood slab toward the front, we're going to go and place down a zombie head, so we will need to break this stone button, place down a zombie head, we're going to break this wooden sign here, followed by the third one back like this, and this is only on the outside here, so not on the inside, the outside like that. And then on the very back here, we're just going to place down a dark oak wood uh, slab here, or sorry, dark oak wood fence gate opened up toward the dark oak wood slab. So my apologies for having us do the signs and stone buttons on the side here, we don't even need them, um, so my bad on that one. Anyways, we want to go and then go to the middle dark oak wood slab. We're going to place down a birch wood fence post that comes off of it. And going down from, or going from uh, both sides of the fence post, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence, or a birch wood fence gate opened up toward the uh, birch wood fence post. So we're going to do this on both sides here so we get something that looks like this, kind of like the racking that holds the bomb on to the, uh, to the wing. And then once that's done, we're going to just copy another one of those bomb designs. So three. Uh, dark oak wood slabs, a zombie head going toward the front, and then going toward the back here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate opened up toward that dark oak wood slab. Once that's all finished there, we're going to go and grab our narrow brick slabs. We're going to place down a row of three of narrow brick top slabs that kind of goes right here next to these three dark oak wood slabs. On the back here, like we did before, we're going to go and place down a dark oak wood fence gate opened up, and on the front of it, uh, obviously going toward the front, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull. Also on the side here, um, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some wooden signs and place down three wooden signs along the side here, those uh, narrow brick top slabs. And once you have that all done, your armaments should look something like this, mounted and ready to go for the wings when we connect them up, when we connect up to them in the future layers. And uh, looking at it from above, we should get something like this once you take what we did over here on the right side and copy it over to the other side and uh, you have a uh, nice kind of outline or kind of a nice platform to go off of for building the rest of the helicopter. Anyways, that's going to do it for our first layer. Let's go ahead and move into our uh, next uh, layer, which is going to be layer two. We're going to go down and then work our way back up. So with that, let's move on to layer two. All right, guys, so moving on to our next layers, we're going to go ahead and just jump straight into doing layers one and two. It's just going to be easier to do them all as we all, all together instead of trying to space it out or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get it started on these layers. Now, the first thing we want to do to begin with is we're going to go ahead and go to this smooth sandstone block here. We're going to go down on the bottom of it, place down a sandstone upside down stair like this on both sides with the backs facing toward each other. One thing I want to go ahead and uh, also add is that we're going to be placing down a wooden sign on the smooth sandstone block. And uh, we'll add in an item frame here that's supposed to go on both sides in a second here, but we're going to go ahead and focus in on getting this layer complete and then coming back and fixing that. Uh, but basically what we want to do next is we're going to go ahead and go in between these sandstone stairs here. We're going to place down a... Uh, iron trap door that goes down from them and kind of in between that space over there like that and then in that space on that iron trap door we're going to place down a anvil like so now coming off the anvil toward the front we're going to place down a narrow brick slab with wooden signs on both sides of the slab after that we want to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods we're going to place down one two three end rods going forward we're going to place down a placeholder block and then coming off this block we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull we're going to delete this block and then place down an end rod so that it connects up to the uh, gun and you have something that looks like this, four end rods and then the uh, wither skeleton skull on the end there for the uh, mounted gun on the bottom here. Once that's done, we're going to go, ahead and go back this way, so we're going to place down a nether brick stair coming off the back of that anvil. We want to go ahead and place down a wooden sign on both sides of this uh, nether brick stair. 
like this. And then come up the stair itself, self, we're going to place down a uh, wither skeleton skull like that. And that's going to do it there for your front gun. Um, after that's all done, on the bottom of these three black wool blocks, we're going to place down three iron trap doors. We then uh, want to go ahead and kind of get some work done on the landing gear uh, for the front here. So it, they're really simple. We're going to go ahead and go to the uh, second row of three back here of iron trap doors. We're going to place down a stone brick slab on both sides. We then want to go ahead and go down and place down a stone brick uh, top slab, or sorry, a regular stone brick slab down like this, and then we're going to place down a stone brick top slab. Now on top of the top slab, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall, and we're going to do the same thing over here on this side. So it's just going to kind of flow down like so, and then we have our top slab and then our cobblestone wall like this coming off of it. Now, after we have that all done there, we want to go ahead and then place down a nether brick upside down stair that's going to come off this top slab to the side. So one uh, upside down stair on both sides here. We're going to place down a uh, regular nether brick stair on top of it, upside down stair come off the upside down stair, and a regular stair coming off that one to create the circular shape and do our front wheel. And same thing over here on this side, just like that. Now, once uh, that's all done, we don't really have much going on the bottom here. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple there on the bottom. Uh, but going ahead and come back here to this section, we want to go ahead and go to the bottom of the, or the tops here, these narrow brick upside down stairs, and we'll place down an iron trap door on top of them, or on the bottom of them, whatever you want to refer to the stair as, just basically like that. Uh, then coming back here, uh, very simply, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a block of coal, a stone bun, and also some wooden trap doors. Uh, we want to go and take wooden trap doors, place down a row of uh, one and two, so one on the bottom of this uh this uh, sandstone stair, one on the bottom of this smooth sandstone block. Going back, or coming down from the lever, I should say, from the back here, we're gonna place down a block of coal, followed by a stone button here on both sides of that block of coal for the back uh, landing gear wheel. And with that all complete, that is going to pretty much do it for layers one and two. With that, we can move on to our next layer, layer number four. Before we go ahead and move on to layer four, I wanna go ahead and re uh, real quick uh, revisit layer number three. So layer three, I mentioned that we need to put a sign here on these smooth sandstone blocks here on both sides, but we're also gonna place down an item frame with a black wool block in it. Same thing over here for some type of sensors or some kind of uh, optics or something like that on the aircraft. Um, so that's what we have right there in the, the front uh, nose. So that is again, layer three, the first layer we did for the build. Let's so go ahead and add those onto both sides of the nose there and you'll be pretty much good to go and move on to our next layer, layer four. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and move on to our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're gonna go ahead and place down a cobblestone wall on this very forward uh, smooth sandstone block. Around this cobblestone wall on the uh, sides and also on the front here, we're gonna place down signs around it like so. And then on the very front here of the cobblestone wall, we're going to place down an item frame with a black stained glass block in it, again, for those optics and instruments there in the front. Going back from this uh, cobblestone wall, we're going to place down a sandstone slab, followed by two smooth sandstone blocks. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go to the cobblestone wall here. On both sides, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull at about a 45 degree angle. Going back from the wither skeleton skull, we're going to place down a sandstone slab, followed by a sandstone stair and then followed it up by placing down one, two, and three smooth sandstone blocks. We then want to place down a birchwood plank, followed by a smooth sandstone block, and then two more birchwood planks back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the sides here. We're going to grab ourselves tripwire hooks, place down one, two, and three tripwire hooks on those three birchwood planks. And we're also going to place a stone button on this middle smooth sandstone block in this row of three here, like so. Uh, we then want to go ahead and take a... Uh, birchwood fence post and we're going to place any birchwood fence post on top of this one right here uh, going ahead and continue along the side here we're going to take smooth sandstone blocks place down one two three four five six smooth sandstone blocks back where they're going to place down a sandstone top slab uh, in between the sandstone top slabs which will be on both sides we're going to place down a black wool block uh, once uh, that's finished there we want to go ahead and then place down a row of three of smooth sand smooth sandstone that's going to go across here like so um, where they're going to place down a smooth sandstone block in the center here, followed by a sandstone upside down stair like this. Coming off this sandstone upside down stair, we're going to place down a nether brick upside down stair like so, so this turns into a corner stair, and then you have a regular upside down nether brick stair. After the nether brick stair, we're going to place down um, two cobblestone walls coming off the nether brick stair, followed by two smooth sandstone blocks in between those cobblestone walls, and also, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but in between these uh, two narrow break ups downstairs and all, we're also going to place down a smooth sandstone block to fill that space in. Anyways, after these two smooth sandstone blocks here, we're going to place down two sandstone top slabs back, followed by a sandstone upside down stair on top of this wooden trap door. Coming off the sandstone upside down stair, we're going to place down a sandstone top slab, 
followed by another sandstone upside down stair. Come off the front of this sandstone upside down stair, we're gonna place down another sandstone upside down stair like this. Off the back of this sandstone upside down stair, we're gonna place down two smooth sandstone blocks, a stone brick stair, and then a redstone repeater on the back here on top of the stone brick upside down stair from the previous layer with the notches flicked out to the sides. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go back up to the section up here. We're going to go ahead and place down a wooden trap door coming off both sides of this second uh, sandstone top slab right on the back here of this uh, sandstone up stairs. So there's a wooden trap door like that on both sides there. Uh, once that's done, uh, that's going to pretty much do it for the fuselage. We're, we can go ahead and then move into the uh, armaments on the wings here. So for these, we're going to go ahead and start off by taking cobblestone walls. We're going to place down one, two, and three cobblestone walls on these middle three green snake plate blocks. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a stone bun, and we're going to place down a stone bun on this black wool block and also on this green snake plate block up here in the front. Uh, once that's done, we want to go ahead and basically duplicate what we did in the previous layer with our bombs here. So we're going to place down three dark oak wood slabs, a zombie head, and on the back here, again, like we were doing, a dark oak wood fence gate. Uh, we want to go ahead and also go to this middle section here, and again, like we did before, a birch wood fence gate in the middle, followed by a uh, sorry, birch wood fence post in the middle, followed by a birch wood fence gate on both sides opened up toward the fence post and then again the bomb over here three dark oak wood slabs and a dark oak wood fence gate on the back here and then a zombie head going toward the front and then lastly on these three nether brick top slabs on the end here we're gonna place down three cobblestone walls like that going up for them with that all done that's going to do it for layer four go ahead and take that same design copy it over the air side and with that we can go ahead and move into our next layer uh, which will be layer number five. Here's a bit of an over, uh, basically an aerial view real quick. So if you're a little confused, you can kind of take a look at it from the aerial perspective, side perspective, and kind of get an idea of what we got going on here. Anyways, that's going to pretty much do it for layer four. Let's move on to layer five. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer uh, number five. So for layer five, we're going to begin with by placing down a wooden trap door on top of this cobblestone wall. Going back from this, we're going to place down a sandstone uh, slab on top of this second smooth sandstone block in this middle row here. Going back from the sandstone slab, we're going to place down one, two, and three light gray stained glass full blocks. Going out to the sides here, on both sides of this sandstone slab, on top of these uh, stone brick, or sorry, sandstone stairs, we're going to place down a zombie, or sorry, a wither skeleton skull at a nice 45 degree angle like so. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and take our light gray stained glass panes. We're going to place down one and two light gray stained glass panes back, followed by a sandstone stair. After the sandstone stair, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight smooth sandstone blocks back from it. Uh, going to the sides of this uh, first smooth sandstone block here next to the stone brick stair, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall out to the side. We're going to go and take signs, wrap it around the uh, three sides here of this cobblestone wall, and we also want to place down a wither skeleton skull at a 45 degree angle on top of this birchwood fence post. Um, so just like this. Um, like that from the side there, so it should look something just like that. After uh, that's all done, we want to go ahead and go to our last three smooth sandstone blocks here. We're going to go ahead and take sandstone slabs, place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven sandstone slabs out to the side. And they should end and connect up to this cobblestone wall. Uh, and we're going to go and do it for the next uh, two uh, rows here. So just like this, coming off these last th or these uh, last three smooth sandstone blocks, connecting up to the cobblestone walls right here on the side there for your wings. With that done, we're going to go ahead and take our uh, white wool. We're going to place down one and two white wool blocks back, followed by a sandstone top slab. In the middle space like we did before, in the previous layer, we're going to place down a black wool block, which will be in between those two sandstone top slabs. I like that to create a little bit of an event type effect. Um, after that's done, we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, and 4 smooth sandstone blocks back. We're then going to go ahead and place down a row of 1 and 2 of cobblestone walls coming off those smooth, this row of 4 smooth sandstone blocks. In between those cobblestone walls, we're going to place down 2 smooth sandstone blocks. Coming off these 2 smooth sandstone blocks, we're going to place down one more block that goes forward. We then want to place down a sandstone upside down stair coming off of it on both sides on top of this wooden trap door. Coming off the face of the stair itself, we're going to go ahead and place down a wooden sign like this. Uh, to go ahead and create this little uh, effect here, this little pop out here on the back tail. Uh, we then want to place down a cobblestone wall that's coming off of, or coming off the sandstone stairs with a smooth sandstone block in between these cobblestone walls. After this smooth sandstone block here, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five back, ending on top of the smooth sandstone block from the previous layer, and giving you a total of what is going to be nine smooth sandstone blocks in this row here for the tail. 
Anyways, with that all complete, that is going to pretty much wrap up this layer. Just want to make sure if there's anything missing. I am missing a few little detail bits. So just to throw these on, uh, we have this row of four smooth sandstone. The last two blocks are going to place down a uh, trip bar hook and then a stone button like that uh, for the detail. Anyways, with that all done there, that is going to pretty much wrap up uh, layer number five. And with that, we can move on to layer six. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to begin with, we want to go ahead and start off by taking our uh, light gray stained glass blocks. We're going to place down a light gray stained glass block on our second one back, so just on top of it like so uh, from the previous layer, so like this. We then want to place down an additional one, two, three, and four blocks back, so you have a total of five light gray stained glass blocks. The first one starting on top of this second light gray stained glass block in this row of two from the previous layer. Once that's done, we're going to go and take light gray stained glass panes, go to the first... Uh, two blocks here, place down light gray stained glass panes on the sides of them, where they're going to place down a sandstone stair going back, uh, come off the sandstone stair out to the side, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate, uh, after that's done we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane on both sides here, out to the sandstone stair, followed by a sandstone slab back. We then want to go ahead and go to the middle here, come off this uh, light gray stained glass block here, we're going to place down a sand, smooth sandstone block, followed by a red stained clay block on both sides. We then want to go ahead and place down one, two, three, and four rows of three of smooth sandstone blocks going back. We're then going to place down two smooth sandstone blocks here in the middle, followed by two white wool blocks on top of the two white wool blocks from the previous layer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch back two smooth sandstone blocks. We're going to place down three more rows of three of smooth sandstone. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. We then want to place down a smooth sandstone block in the middle, followed by a sandstone stair on both sides of it like this. Going back from the smooth sandstone stairs, we're going to place down one, two, and three cobblestone walls. In between those three cobblestone walls, we're going to place down three smooth sandstone blocks. We then want to place down a sandstone stair back, followed by one, two, and three sandstone slabs. A sandstone stair facing the opposite direction is this stair right here. Two smooth sandstone blocks on the back of this stair, and then a cobblestone wall like that for the tail there. Uh, with that done, we're going to go ahead and now focus in on putting the start of our kind of engines here on the sides of the uh, juice lodge. So for this, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves an iron trap door, also some stone brick slabs. We're going to need some wooden uh, trap doors and some sandstone slabs. So to begin with, we're going to go ahead and go to the second uh, row of three of smooth sandstone blocks here after the red section right here. We're going to place down an iron trap door on both sides. We then want to place down a stone brick slab back, followed by a sandstone slab. We're going to place down a second sandstone slab with an iron trap, or sorry, a wooden trap door that comes out to the side of it like so. After that's done, we're going to place down a row of two of sandstone top slabs, followed by a second row of two of sandstone top slabs. This row, however, is going to have a wooden trap door come off the end of the row like that. We then want to place down an additional two rows of uh, two here of sandstone top slabs going back. Looking at it from above, we should get something that looks like this. Bit of a view here from the side here and uh, this side as well. It's pretty straightforward and uh, will be basically where our engines are going to be going into play. Anyways, that right there is going to do it for layer number uh, five, or sorry, my bad, I think that's actually layer, we're on layer six, my bad. Uh, also, uh, one thing we can throw on here is a um, lever here, which I believe is supposed to be faced upward to connect it to the stair. Um, so we're going to go ahead and face this lever upward like that, which will connect up with a stair in the future, or in the next layer when we get to it. Anyways, uh, that will pretty much wrap up this uh, layer. Just make double checking to make sure I'm not missing any detail bits on the sides, and we're all good to go. So that's going to do it for layer 6. Let's move on to layer 7. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer 7. For layer 7, we're going to start off by placing it down an iron trap door on top of this second light gray stained glass block that was in that row of 5 from the previous layer. So on the second block, an iron trap door on top of it. We then want to place down a nether brick stair back, going back on the iron trap door, followed by one and two light gray stained glass full blocks. After those two light gray stained glass full blocks, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sandstone, smooth sandstone blocks, followed by two sandstone slabs, two wooden trap doors. We're then going to go ahead and go back here on the smooth sandstone block. We're going to place down a sandstone stair on top of it, followed by two smooth sandstone blocks going back from the stair, and any on top of that cobblestone wall. Uh, once that's all done, that's our center row, we can go ahead and start pulling out to the sides now. So going up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull at a 45 degree angle on top of these two sandstone stairs on both sides of this narrow brick stair. We then want to take light gray stained glass panes, place down one and two light gray stained glass panes on the side of these two light gray stained glass blocks. After those panes, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six smooth sandstone blocks, followed by one and two birchwood planks, and then two sandstone slabs going backwards. Uh, with that done, we're going to go back up to this section here. 
Uh, on the side of this sandstone slab, we're going to place down a uh, nether brick slab, followed by an item frame, and then a black wool block in the item frame. Coming off the side of the slab, we're going to place down a sign, like this, and then going back from this, the uh, slab itself, we're going to place down two black wool blocks back like this. And then on the side of these black wool blocks, we're going to have stone buttons, so we're going to place down one and two stone buttons. After that's done, we're going to take smooth sandstone blocks, place down one, two, three, four, and five smooth sandstone box blocks back. We're then going to place down a stone brick stair face in this direction, and then one stair coming off this stair like so. And then coming off this stone brick stair here, we're going to place down a stone brick, uh, or sorry, a sandstone upside down stair like that going toward the rear. For our next row out to the side, we're going to go ahead and take our stone brick slabs, or sorry, cobblestone slab, or sorry, my bad, cobblestone walls. We're going to place down one and two on these two smooth sandstone blocks, followed by a row of one, two, and three of smooth sandstone. Coming off this uh, stone brick corner stair, we're going to place down a, a uh, corner stair like this. And then we also want to place down a corner stair like that, so we create this kind of circular, uh, kind of, I guess, box shape, really, uh, is more of what to really say uh, back here, kind of look like an exhaust um, uh, exhaust for the engine, and then just a sandstone upside down stair come off this uh, stone brick stair. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go back out to the sides here. We're going to go and take a smooth sandstone block, place it down on this wooden trap door to the side, followed by a cobblestone wall on both sides, and then coming off this uh, sandstone, Smooth sandstone uh, block we're going to place down a sign, followed by an item frame on the side of the block and a black wool block in the item frame. Uh, once that's all uh, done there, um, that's going to pretty much, you know, wrap that up and, you know, finish it off for this section. That's going to do it for layer 7, and with that we can move on to our next layer, layer 8. Alright guys, so moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 8. For layer 8, we're going to start off by going ahead and going to the front here. We're going to place down a row of two of iron trap doors on these two like gray stained glass full blocks in the previous layer. We're then going to place down a narrow brick stair that goes back like this, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 smooth sandstone blocks, followed by a sandstone stair like this, and then a wither skeleton skull on the end here. Going back up to this uh, narrow brick stair in the front, we're going to place down a sign on both sides of it. Going back from the side, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, and 4, cobblestone walls back, followed by a wooden trap door, and then we're going to place down a row of two stone buttons on these two birchwood planks. Going out to the sides here, we're going to place down a stone button on this first black wool block, followed by an iron trap door up behind it. Also, we're going to place down a stone button on this bottom, at the bottom of the black wool block from layer, I believe, that was layer 6 there. So we're going to go and add that on real quick on the bottom of that block. Uh, going ahead and continuing on back from this uh, iron trap door, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 wooden trap doors back. We then want to go out to the side here, place down 1 and 2 wooden trap doors like that to the side. And then on top of this uh, sand, smooth sandstone full block, we're going to place down a redstone repeater with its notches flicked out to the sides like that. And that will complete the engines up here and get us kind of started on the, uh, turb or the rotor section, which we'll be getting to um, a little bit later. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and come back to the tail here. We're going to place down a sandstone stair on top of the smooth sandstone block. A smooth sandstone block behind the sandstone stair. Sandstone up, sandstone stair going toward the back, followed by a wooden trap door like this. So you get something that looks like that. Now on the left side of the tail, and only on the left side of the aircraft, again I'll say it again, only on the left side, we're going to place down a row of five of sandstone slabs coming off this sandstone upside down stair. Two sandstone slabs, and then three birch wood slabs coming off the smooth sandstone block. And then two birchwood slabs come off the side of the sandstone stair. So you get something that looks like this uh, for the back tail here. Now, uh, again, a third time, this is only going to be on the left side. You're not going to do it on the right side here because the right side we have the rotor here. So we obviously do not want that to be in the way or affected. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. Um, we're not going to be putting a, there, there's, you know, realistically with the helicopter, not a, not a uh, stabilizer out to the side here. So uh, you want stuff that looks just like that, and once you have that all complete, that is going to do it for layer 8. Let's move on to layer 9. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to, I guess you can say, our last two final layers. Um, it's technically mostly just the layer 9, but there is a wooden trap door on top of the block, so I guess it technically makes it a layer 10. Um, so I guess this is technically layers 9 through 10, though it's mostly layer 9. Now, uh, we will be adding the rotors on kind of a little bit separately, so I just want to get the fuselage complete, and we're going to go and then work on the rotors and get those put in place. So, yeah, that's why you kind of see us skipping over that as well, probably something that I should have mentioned. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started with our final layers here, uh, layers 9 through 10. So to start off with, on this smooth sandstone block directly behind the narrow brick stair here, uh, for the top, we're going to place down a sandstone stair on top of that, followed by two smooth sandstone blocks back, a sandstone stair, and then another brick stair like that with its back facing toward the rear. 
We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a Wither Skeleton Skull. Place down a Wither Skeleton Skull at about a 45 degree angle on top of these two cobblestone walls. Uh, right next to this sandstone slab here. And then we make sure I get more of a 45 degree angle. There we go. After that, come off these two spoof sandstone blocks. We're going to place down two sandstone ups and down stairs. And then on top of these cobblestone walls right here, we're going to place down a Wither Skeleton Skull here at about a uh, 45 degree angle again up here on the front on both sides there. Once that's done, moving back to the tail, we're going to place down a sandstone slab on top of this smooth sandstone block. Smooth sandstone block behind the sandstone stair, and then a sandstone slab come off the smooth sandstone block on top of the iron trap door. When that's all done, on top of the smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a wooden trap door. This is what I'm technically referring to with layer 10. Uh, we then want to place down a sandstone stair coming off the side of the smooth sandstone block to the left side and left side only. Coming off the face of the stair, we're going to place down a wooden sign, and then two uh, wither skeleton skulls here, one on the side of this stair and one on the side of this slab. Over here on this side, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall that comes off this uh, smooth sandstone block, followed by a black wool block, and then a wither skeleton skull coming off of that, which the back tail rotor will connect up to when we get around to that. Um, anyways, once that's done, that's going to pretty much complete the fuselage. So here's 9 through 10 of the aircraft. We're going to then work on putting the rotors on and getting that all squared away. And then we'll be moving on to adding the camouflage if you guys want to. But I actually do like it just in a straight tan. I think it looks pretty nice. Uh, but obviously, you can re feel free to uh, do the camo or just leave it tan, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the rotors and get the uh, kind of uh, main portion of the build. Get the aircraft itself done and then we can move on to the camo. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to the rotors. To begin with, we're going to go ahead and start off with the tail rotor. Now the tail rotor is not perfect by all means. You know, it's very difficult to do like a five-bladed rotor on the back. And uh, I definitely did my best for it. It's not perfect, but uh, you know, maybe you guys can come up with something better. But this is what we're going to be building. So uh, we're going to copy exactly how we have it like that. Though you could have it facing a different direction if you want to. Uh, we're just going to copy what we did over there. So for this, we're going to place down a nether brick upside down stair on top of this uh, black wool block. We then want to go ahead and go up from the the uh, narrow brick stair two cobbles to walls up like so. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, side here of this black wool block. We're going to place down a narrow brick slab on both sides. We then want to place down a narrow brick top slab going out to the side, followed by a second one after. We're going to go and do the same thing over here. So just like that on both sides there. After that's done, we're going to go, ahead and go down from this uh, black wool block. We're going to place down a uh, nether brick uh, stair on the bottom of it so uh, you want like you on the top there like that uh, then we want to go ahead and go to the sides going down at an angle we're to place down a nether brick stair like this going down at an angle kind of like a staircase pattern same thing over here like that and once you have something that looks like that uh, you're going to be basically you're basically done with the back tail rotor now it's time to go ahead and work on the main rotors as you can see here uh, so let's go ahead and move into the main rotors. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving on to the uh, rotors. So for this, we're going to go ahead and get the center set up and then work our way out with the blades. Uh, so the first thing to do is to place down a cobblestone wall that's going to go on top of this smooth sandstone block right here. And then around the cobblestone wall, we're going to place down narrow brick fence posts like this all the way around like that. On top of the, uh, on top of the cobblestone wall here, we're going to place down a sandstone stair like this. And then on top of all of the wooden or near brick fence posts, we're going to place down a wooden trap door. On the very top of that sandstone stair, we're going to place down a birchwood fence post that sticks up like so. With that all done, we're going to take stone brick slabs and we want to go ahead and take stone brick slabs and go off the sides here of these near brick fence posts with stone brick top slabs. We're going to go ahead and do two that go out from each one of these uh, near brick fence posts like this. Now each one of these blades is going to be different from each other, so it is going to be something that we're all going to, we're going to have to build each blade individually. So to go ahead and begin with, I'm going to go ahead and grab some my wooden axe here real quick so I can get an accurate count of how far we need to go out. So for our first blade, we're going to go ahead and start with the blade over here on this side, on the right side. Now for this blade, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 nether brick slabs out to the side from the stone brick top slab. Once uh, that's complete there, we're going to go ahead and go down from this top slab and place down a uh, narrow brick slab coming off this uh, narrow brick top slab. Now this narrow brick slab row here in total is going to be six blocks in length. So we're going to go ahead and place down, we have one already, two, three, four, five, and six narrow brick slabs out to the side. We're going to follow this by a row of one, two, three, four, and five stone brick top slabs out to the side like that. 
So you get stuff that looks like this for your first kind of blade. Uh, going over to the other side, we're going to go ahead and kind of copy a similar design, except we're going to do something a little bit different. So with our narrow brick top slabs, come off these stone brick top slabs, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Nether brick top slabs out to the side. This time, however, this uh, blade over here, we have the kind of the, the, the other row of slabs going toward the back. This one, we're going to go ahead and go toward the front. So for this, we're going to go ahead and go and place down a row of narrow brick slabs. So same as we did before, one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, and five narrow brick top slabs. So you can kind of see here, they're a little offset. They're not directly across from each other. This one's kind of a little bit, it has, has its uh, edge going toward the front. And this one has its edge going toward the back. Uh, so uh, you want that difference there on both sides. Now moving on to the uh, forward facing uh, blade. This one's going to be a little bit different. So for this we're going to place down two narrow brick top slabs coming off this cobblestone or this stone brick wall. Uh, you can see over here since we have this blade, this uh, side going back like this, we're going to go ahead and go to the side here and place down our narrow brick slabs to go back in the direction of that blade. So like that. So you can kind of see here that this slab right here, the slab area kind of keeps that rotating look all the way around. So we don't want it to have it, we don't want to have it on this side as when you look at it from above, you know, it's not going to look right. And as you can see, the, the you know, slanted sides toward each other. We do not want that. We want it to be, we want them to kind of be facing away from each other all the way around. So uh, we're going to have two narrow brick top slabs, two narrow brick slabs. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and go down. We're going to place a narrow brick slab and we're going to have a row of narrow brick slabs here. This row down the middle here is going to be seven blocks. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven narrow brick slabs going forward. We're going to go ahead and drop to the side here. We're going to drop down a nether brick uh, top slab like this. We're going to place down one, two, and three more. So we have a row of four here. We then want to place down one, two, and three uh, narrow brick slabs like that to kind of keep that pattern going. Now, uh, going toward the front here, we're going to go ahead and drop down from this uh, row of narrow brick slabs here for the, like this kind of like the middle row here. We're going to place down a row of three of top slabs that come off this row right here. And then to the sides here, we're going to place down one and two narrow brick slabs like that. And you have your front uh, rotor there um, complete and ready to go. Uh, going toward the back here, we're going to do kind of a very similar technique as we did right here for this blade except this is going to be going upward. So for this, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of two narrow brick slabs, and then uh, narrow brick top slabs, and then to down to the side here, we're going to place down a row of two narrow brick half slabs. Again, look and see that we have this uh, slant, or this kind of portion that goes a little bit down, uh, kind of facing away from each other all the way around here. And you can see this side back here, like we did for the both sides, the both uh, blades here on both sides, offset from this row up here. Anyways, uh, from this, we're going to go ahead and go up with uh, a slab, so like this, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're then gonna go ahead and go to the side here. We're gonna place down a top slab of their brick. We're gonna place down one, two, three, and four. We're then gonna go ahead and go into one, two, and three of another brick slabs. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and go up a level again. We're gonna place down a row of three of another brick top slabs down the center row here, and then a row of two out to the side there, like so. And once you have that complete, you'll have your blades complete for the rotor. And uh, basically the rotor is complete on the helicopter. Here's what it looks like from above. And you can go and take a look at it uh, from the different sides here and see the angled uh, blades and everything like that it looks pretty cool and it's pretty much squared away. Anyways, that's what uh, that's going to pretty much do it for the basic design for the uh, Danel uh, Rudivok. Uh, we're going to go ahead and now move into doing the camouflage for it. So if you guys want to add the cool camouflage you guys can uh, get an idea of how to add it yourselves. Uh, but anyways, that's going to kind of do it for the main structure and all that stuff for the aircraft. Let's move into the little additional uh, part of the tutorial, which is going to be doing the camouflage. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into putting the camouflage on the aircraft. Now, I'm not going to be doing the entire aircraft just because it's not really necessary. It's pretty straightforward, honestly, in what we're trying to do here. Uh, we're mainly just trying to add splotches of green and uh, some, you know, spruce wood to kind of create a nice kind of color scheme. That kind of represents the real life kind of camouflage. A lot of the really folks uh, uh, tend to uh, basically have. So uh, to kind of begin with, we don't want to make we don't we want to make sure that we kind of keep you know a good mixture of between uh, the sandstone, the spruce wood, and also our green uh, stained clay slash dark oak wood. So uh, for all of our green sections of the aircraft, we're we'll gonna be using dark oak wood 
uh, stairs, slabs, and also green stained clay. Unfortunately, we don't have green slabs or uh, stairs, but I think dark oak wood uh, kind of goes good with the green and kind of shows that, I guess, and I use it for all my tanks, so uh, kind of keeps it a little bit more consistent. Um, and so we can also go ahead and feel free to replace blocks. Now, remember that if you break a block that has a um, sign or anything like that on it, make sure that you go ahead and replace it, uh, as it will obviously look weird if you don't have it or don't replace it. Uh, but, you know, just feel free to replace blocks. You know, you, you can do random blocks. You don't really have to do any kind of pattern as it's more of kind of a splosh design. You can replace cobblestone walls here with mossy cobblestone walls for green. You can also replace the uh, with the skeleton skulls here with some green zombie heads if you really want to. Uh, but we're just going to go and do kind of some random kind of splotches here of uh, brown and, uh, you know, green while trying to keep our uh, sandstone, you know, color still in there. Um, so we can maybe do some green that kind of comes in this section, maybe runs up this side here and into the cockpit. Uh, we can choose to leave these hatches. We can choose to kind of incorporate them in the camouflage or choose to kind of leave them standing out. I kind of left them standing out just kind of so they're a little bit more visible uh, that there's actually hatches there. Um, you know, kind of have our camouflage kind of flow up here into the aircraft like this. And then you can go into the engine uh, and, you know, have it kind of continue into the engine. Uh, we can maybe put some green in here, have that mossy cobblestone wall start to come into effect again, that section there. And you kind of get the general idea of what we're doing here for it. When we get to the wings and stuff like that, we can have the camouflage kind of work into the wings, maybe a little bit of an angle here, throw some dark oak wood in uh, as well, you know, keeping that kind of splotch type look to it, and maybe a little bit more spruce wood like that. So we're still keeping a kind of a balanced mix between the sandstone the green, and all three of those kind of color patterns there. To kind of keep the aircraft, you know, you know, still looking good and all that stuff. Uh, but, you know, you're just going to kind of continue this for the aircraft. And uh, you can replace these top slabs here on the bottom. And, uh, you know, maybe change the blocks up above them that kind of, kind of correlate to. Uh, but, you know, I'll kind of stop there on the sides. On the bottom here, make sure that you can also do the bottom. Uh, also, something that you don't want to kind of leave out and forget. Uh, you know, can just do a, some random patterns here. Doesn't have to be anything special. Uh, you know, you can carry it over to the air side, some, you know, kind of striping here. And then over here on the air side, maybe have it fold up and then start working its way into the fuselage a little bit if you want to. Um, but, you know, just kind of go crazy with it. Uh, obviously, not too crazy, uh, but, you know, just kind of incorporate a little bit. And then maybe here we'll put some green in right here, have this pop up and kind of flow in this way. And then down here, we kind of had some spruce wood, a big kind of spruce wood splotch here. So we'll have this kind of fold up into this section here like this. And of course, replace our signs. Anything that we break, we want to replace it. And uh, so that's kind of a basically a general idea on how to do the camouflage. It's just going to be doing some random splotches of blocks there. And you can really see it starts to add a little bit more detail to it and really makes the helicopter kind of stand out more than just the standard sandstone. Even though the standard, uh, standard sandstone does look pretty good. Um, but yeah, you're going to take it all the way back to the tail and um, everything about that. And once you have your helicopter all set up in the camouflage to your liking, uh, you're pretty much good to go. Which works nice about the camouflage is you can do different designs or uh, not really copy the same design all the way around. You can maybe just do the helicopter in tan and then do like copy and paste, you know, a couple of these helicopters in a tax scene or something. And you can do the camouflage individually for each one. And then you have uh, three helicopters that look a little bit unique from each other. So even though they're the same helicopter, cool little design aspect and all that stuff. But anyways, that's going to pretty much do it for this uh, tutorial uh, for the Danelle uh, Rebook. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this tutorial and you're able to put it to good use. It's our first ever uh, South African aircraft. So really cool to go ahead and cover and get a nice tutorial for you guys. Again, a special thanks to Patreon supporter Brock Cherry for making this tutorial possible. And feel free to check out my Patreon page. The link is again down in the description. And that, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett2F4, and I'll see you guys next time.